Hey everybody. Today I want to talk about water softeners and fish keeping. There's a lot of confusion out there about exactly how water softeners work and there's a lot of talk about they put sodium in your water and you can't use them with planted tanks and you can't use them in aquariums in general and water softeners in a just generalized sort of way are usually thought about as being bad news and they're not recommended for your uh, fish tanks. And so today we're going to talk about that because there is some truth to that. There are some reasons that softened water is not ideal for our fish but it's not as bad as most people might think and again it all just depends on what kind of water you're starting with the more softening your water softening system has to do the more it's going to impact your water the more sodium it's going to add to your water but even then if you've got very hard water does it really add enough sodium to be a concern and my belief is that it does not and today we're going to talk about why that is and we're going to do a little demonstration even and show you uh, a little bit of a visual example of exactly what I'm talking about. So first of all, let's talk about what a water softener is and how they work so we all are on the same page and we know what we're talking about. First of all, to define hard water, you are already talking about very specific parameters of your water. You're talking about the measurement of the amount of calcium calcium and the amount of magnesium. There are other trace minerals that affect water hardness, but those are usually, again, trace amounts. So more often than not, generally speaking, by and large, we are going to be speaking about calcium and magnesium when we talk about water hardness and how much calcium and magnesium is in the water determines how hard it is. The more there is, the harder the water is. This is where all the scale in your sink and your appliances come from. It's the water evaporating away and leaving behind these minerals that are dissolved into the water and again the chief minerals are going to be mostly calcium uh, magnesium is not as significant but it's still a significant one so calcium and magnesium is what we're going to be talking about here so how does a water softener actually remove the calcium and the magnesium from the water? It removes it by using what is known as an ion exchange resin. And I'll keep it as simple as I can. The ion exchange resin is a sort of little plastic bead that has a negative electrical charge to it. It's permanently created with a negative electrical charge to it. And so sodium ions, such as you would find in sodium chloride, sodium ions are positively charged they have a net positive value of plus one so they will bond to this ion exchange resin and that's why we use the salt in our water softeners we put the salt in that bath that does not go through the drinking water part of it or anything like that that's just basically a brine reservoir to let the salt dissolve fully into the water so when you do your backwash which we'll explain in a minute you've got fully brined completely saturated sodium solution. So we're going to start from you've got these fully charged ion exchange resins. You got your ion exchange resin and it's already got your sodium ion attached to it. Well as the water flows through this medium Calcium and magnesium are also positively charged, but they have a net positive charge of plus two. And so they are more strongly attracted to this negatively charged particle, this negatively charged resin. And so what they do is they'll bond to the resin and they knock that sodium ion off and they knock the sodium ion off into the water. And now they've bonded to this resin. And so over time, you're adding sodium to your water every time another magnesium or calcium ion comes along it's going to bond to that resin it's going to knock a sodium ion off the sodium ion is going to flow downstream and the calcium ion or the magnesium ion will be captured in this resin and so that's where your sodium in your sodium in your water comes from and so the way we recharge the system is we backwash it once you've got enough and you don't have to wait till it's depleted and you shouldn't wait till it's depleted one back if it was fully depleted one backwash wouldn't fully recharge it so you set your backwash cycle up every three or four days usually and you'll and you'll do a backwash and so what happens is this sodium solution this this brine solution goes and flushes 
through there and just by sheer volume of numbers there is so much sodium in there that it eventually knocks all of those calcium and magnesium ions off and it replaces sodium ions on all of those ion exchange resins and when you do the back wash and flush that brine solution flushes out all that calcium and washes it down the drain and so that gets rid of all the calcium and the magnesium and your little ion exchange resins are all ready to go again and then it back washes some fresh water through it so that when you turn your sink on in the morning or whatever most people have this bash wash cycle go at night and so when you turn your sink on in the morning you've still got fresh clean water coming out that doesn't have this this sodium backwash you know this brine solution in it so the idea that you're going to taste saltiness in your water is just it's not there the, the, the numbers simply aren't there and that's what we're going to talk about now is getting into the numbers how much sodium is actually being put in your water through this process is that a significant amount of sodium is it an amount of sodium you need to worry about and so again the answer is no it really isn't it's not a whole lot of sodium when you get down to the brass tacks so the way the ion exchange resin works generally you will get one sodium ion knocked off for every one calcium or magnesium sometimes two will get knocked off so the ratio is not exactly one to one but it's mostly one to one you can maybe add a little extra tenth of a point or something there to the amount of sodium going out as the amount of calcium coming in but it's basically a one-to-one -one ratio so if you're talking to somebody that's in the business and they're dealing with water softeners they don't think in parts per million the way we in the fish keeping hobby do they think in grains of hardness and they'll talk to you about how many grains of hardness your water has one grain of hardness is equal to 17.14 parts per million of dissolved calcium or dissolved magnesium in your water and so when they talk about soft water is anywhere from zero to three and a half grains that roughly translates to zero to 60 parts per million is soft you know very soft to soft anything between i think it's like 60 and 120 parts per million uh, is moderately hard 120 to 180 is hard and then anything over 180 is considered very hard so remember we're not talking about just total dissolved solids in the sense that anything in the water is, is contributing to this that that gets a little misleading when people tell you the TDS number we're not really talking about the actual TDS number because you can dissolve sugar in there you can dissolve salt in there you can dissolve all sorts of stuff in there that will affect the TDS number but has no impact on the hardness remember the hardness is only the measurement of the calcium and the magnesium so when we're talking about TDS it's not really the total dissolved solids of everything it's the total amount of calcium and magnesium is what I'm talking about so let's be clear when I say TDS I'm talking about the total amount of dissolved calcium and magnesium not the total dissolved everything that could be in your water again nitrate will contribute to TDS sugar will contribute to TDS carbonates uh, contribute to TDS there's all sorts of stuff out there that contributes to TDS on your little TDS meter that has nothing to do with water hardness per se so remember that so when we're talking about these you know zero to 60 parts per million that's zero to 60 parts per million of calcium and magnesium or say 60 to 120 parts per million calcium and magnesium so if you've got water that is liquid concrete you know it, it's just the hardest it's insane hard water let's let's say 500 parts per million calcium and magnesium you know anything again remember, anything over 180 parts per million is considered very hard water so let's go all the way up and get wild and say five or six hundred parts per million calcium and magnesium again your tds meter may show 1200 parts per million but all I'm worried about is how much of that is the calcium and magnesium. So if you've got 500 parts per million calcium and magnesium, you're roughly going to be knocking out, let's just go wild and say 600 parts per million sodium is going to go out into your water system. Is 600 parts per million a lot of sodium? 
I don't think it is, and I'm going to show you a little example right here in a moment. Uh, we know that when we're salting in an aquarium, a lot of people will talk about putting aquarium salt in a tank. I shot a video about this not too long ago about how planted aquariums can't tolerate very much salt at all because the sodium uh, becomes toxic to plants at fairly small dosages. You don't need a whole lot of sodium uh, in your aquarium to really start impacting your plants. But most people will agree that one teaspoon per gallon is safe to use in your aquarium. Maybe that might be the max for some sensitive plants, but usually, generally speaking, one teaspoon of salt in a gallon of water is not gonna really be that much salt in an aquarium. So most people agree to that. So let's go and have a look at my TDS meter and show you exactly what one teaspoon of salt will do to a gallon of water. All right, this is going to be a simple experiment to see how much of an increase measured in parts per million we will get in the total dissolved solid count by adding one teaspoon of salt in one gallon of water. Now, this is not distilled water or anything like that. I simply put it in this jug so I could measure out one gallon, but this is my RO water, and it is not RODI. It is simply RO water, so there will be some small amount of TDS in here, probably around 10 to 15 parts per million, and that's fine. All we're trying to do here is establish a base level, then we will add the teaspoon of salt, we'll make sure it's thoroughly dissolved in there, and then we'll measure the total dissolved solids again and see how much of an increase we get. So that was just simply so we know we're dealing with one gallon of water. This will give us a measurement for our baseline, Gives it a few moments to settle in, and then I'll press the hold button, and I'll show you exactly what we're dealing with. So it's a little tiny bit higher than I was expecting, but we are sitting right at, let's see if you can see that or not. Of course not. Can you see that? It is at 16 parts per million. Let me turn this light on over my head and see if that lights it up enough. There you go. 16 parts per million total dissolved solids. So that's our baseline. That's what we're starting with. Now we are going to take one teaspoon of salt. One measured teaspoon of salt. We're going to just dissolve that in there and swirl it around. Give that a few moments to make sure that's really thoroughly mixed in there. There's no need really to rinse off the TDS meter since the TDS meter was just in fairly pure water. Now I can see a little bit of salt swirling around in the bottom so we still did not dissolve every last little bit of it but we certainly dissolved the vast majority of it so that's going to be fine for the purposes of this test. Again this is not 100% of that salt has not yet dissolved into this water but the vast majority of it has, so let's see what we're dealing with now after a teaspoon of salt goes in there. Again, I'm going to give it a few moments for the number to settle down. And then we will press the hold button again. And now... 2,139. All right, now as you saw, we jumped from 16 parts per million to 2,136, I believe it was. So we jumped a huge number, and that was simply with one teaspoon of sodium chloride. Now, getting back to what we were saying with water hardness, if you've got that liquid concrete water that's got 500 parts per million and you're putting out 600 parts per million sodium ions into your water, based on what we just saw with one teaspoon of salt, do you really think 600 parts per million sodium ions is that much sodium ions? Do you really think that's going to have that big of an impact on your aquarium? I certainly don't. I've been using softened water for years. I've been using softened water since I started. Uh, uh, my water softener is a little unusual. I actually have very soft water. It's soft, acidic, it has no carbonates in it, it's got nothing in it. Um, 
Well, it's got about 200 parts per million TDS in it, but it has no calcium, no magnesium. Um, it's got some nitrate in it, and it's got no carbonates in it. I don't know what's actually in my water. I've never actually figured out what's in there, but I have about 200 parts per million in my groundwater. When it comes out of my tap after it's been through my system, it has about 250 right now is when I measured it uh, last night. Uh, we were sitting right under 250 parts per million. So I've got more TDS in my tap water after it goes through my softening system than it does coming out of my ground. And the reason is I don't actually soften my water. I neutralize my water. And by neutralizing it, I'm actually adding calcium and magnesium, chloride, I'm sorry, calcium and magnesium carbonate to the water. And what that does is the carbonates bring the pH up and it brings it up to around neutral. And then it goes through the softening system, which actually removes the calcium and the magnesium that I just put in there. It just takes the calcium and the magnesium back out and it leaves the carbonates behind. And so I am getting some of the sodium ion exchange, but I'm also getting some carbonates added to the water, which helps keep my pH stable. Now I still have a very low carbonate hardness. It's only a carbonate hardness of two coming out of my tap. And I do actually put stuff in my tanks to make the carbonate hardness a little higher than that. I usually keep it around four or five. But coming out of my water softener, again, I don't really have a water softener, but I sort of do. I have a water neutralizer, but the neutralizer hardens the water, and then I have to soften the water that I just hardened. And again, even at the end of that whole process, I'm left with 250 parts per million TDS. And again, I know not all of that is sodium. So, you know, again, I don't know what you're starting with. I don't know what your starting water is. But again, if you've got 900 parts per million, 1,000 parts per million calcium and magnesium, which again, it, that would go clang when it hit your sink if it fell out of your tap. It would hurt your foot if you dropped a glass on it. It would be like liquid rock. I mean, I don't even know how hard water would have to be if you had 1,000 parts per million. But even then, you'd only be looking at 11 or 1,200 parts per million sodium. That'd still be like a half a teaspoon of salt in per gallon of water. That probably would barely be enough for, to, to hit the taste threshold, honestly. So I don't know. I just, again, my opinion is that it's just not that big of a deal. A lot of people worry about it unduly. The real issue you run into is the fact that you're stripping all the calcium and the magnesium out of the water. And a lot of times you'll strip the carbonates out of it, uh, depending on what kind of system you run it through. And so you can actually make your water worse by stripping too much stuff out of it. Your fish do need electrolytes. They do need some calcium and magnesium in the water. And even having some additional sodium in the water is not a bad idea. As we we know because we often will add some sodium by putting aquarium salts in the water for the health of the fish. I really don't have to do that. I don't have a lot of sodium added to my water, but it's enough. These are soft water fish that I keep and they're not used to being in water that has much sodium in it anyway. They've adapted to be able to draw those very small amounts of sodium out of the water. And so my little additional sodium from my water softening system is plenty uh, to keep my fish from being overly stressed, but it's not anywhere near numbers that are, are you know, again, not even a approaching anything close to like a teaspoon per gallon of water. It's just not that much salt that comes out of water softening systems. And people tend to get a little overexcited about just how much sodium they think they're adding to their, their water. So if you're concerned about it, it's easy enough to do a few simple tests and checks. You can test what your uh, hardness is out of your groundwater. You know, if you've got a system bypass where you can get your groundwater, you can check that. You can look at the hardness. You can see how much calcium and magnesium is in it. And by determining how much calcium and magnesium is in it, you can get a rough estimate of how much sodium is going to be in it or in the backside of it. But as I've just demonstrated, even if you've got some really, really significantly hard water, it's probably still not going to come close to a simple teaspoon of salt per gallon of water. So I'd, interest, I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts about all that. So put your comments down below and make sure you're subscribed and ring that bell and all that good YouTube stuff. I know we all say that all the time, but it really does help us out. So make sure you do that. And of course, you don't want to miss any of my updates or new videos or anything. I put a new video out every day. I do a live stream every Friday and Sunday night at 8 p.m. You don't want to miss them. And of course, for my members, I do a private live stream every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. So if you sign up for basic membership, you'll get access to that live stream as well. So thanks for watching this one. Don't forget to leave your comment down below and I'll see you real soon in the next one.